Hello and welcome to video two of healthy eating and gestational diabetes. During this video, we will be discussing healthy eating, the eat well guide, an overview of the food groups and providing a detailed overview of carbohydrates. The eat well guide can help you to understand the different types of food that make up a healthy diet. It also shows how much of these foods you should eat to keep your diet healthy and well balanced. It's a good idea to try and get this balance right throughout the week. Try to choose a variety of different foods from each of the groups to help you get the wide range of nutrients your body needs to stay healthy. Fruit and vegetables should make up about a third of your daily diet. Try to have a wide range of different varieties and colours and aim for five a day. Fruit contains a lot of vitamins, minerals and fibre, making it a nutritious snack. Due to the natural sugars in fruit, this increases blood glucose levels gradually over four hours and therefore the amount eaten should be limited. Aim to limit fruit portions to two to three times daily and spread these over the course of the day, ensuring you are sticking to the correct portion size. Portion size will be discussed more in the next video. Different varieties of both fruit and veg include fresh, frozen, tinned fruit in its natural juice, or juice veg, which all count towards your five a day. Carbohydrates are the body's main energy source. Therefore, carbohydrates are important and can be included as part of a healthy, balanced diet. It is helpful to choose whole grain starchy carbohydrates as they ensure a gradual rise in blood glucose levels and contain additional important nutrients like fiber. These also help keep you fuller for longer. Examples of starchy carbohydrates include, and are not limited to, bread, cereal, potatoes, rice, pasta, chapati, and noodles. Try to include at least one starchy food with most meals. This will provide you with a steady supply of energy throughout the day. Protein is an essential nutrient for the body that does not affect blood glucose levels. This group includes, and is not limited to, beans, pulses, fish, eggs, meat, and poultry. These foods are both good sources of protein and a variety of vitamins and minerals, so it's important to include these foods in your diet. Beans and pulses are a good alternative to meat, as they are low in fat, but high in protein, fiber, vitamins, and minerals. Alternatively, eggs are a good source of protein, vitamin D and minerals. However, it is essential to ensure these are fully cooked prior to eating whilst pregnant. Oil rich fish are high in omega-3 fats, which may help prevent heart disease. Oily fish include salmon, trout, heron and sardines. Whilst you are pregnant or breastfeeding, you should have no more than two portions of oily fish a week. A portion equates to around 140 grams. Try and eat less processed meat, such as sausages, bacon, and cured meat. This is because these types of meat products usually contain a lot of fat and salt. They are also highly processed, which reduces the nutritional content. Limit red meat intake to three portions, which is around 500 grams per week and remove skin and visible fat from both meat and poultry. Fats do not have an impact on blood glucose levels. There are different types of fat. Two of the main types are saturated and unsaturated. Too much saturated fat can lead to increased blood cholesterol levels. Some of the fats in our diet are essential but we need to think about the type of fat we add to our food. Try to cut down on your saturated fat intake, such as butter, ghee, cakes and biscuits, and fatty or processed meats. Try to choose foods that contain heart healthier, unsaturated fats instead, such as olive or rapeseed oils and spreads, oily fish, nuts, 
seeds and avocados. Dairy foods provide the richest and best absorbed source of dietary calcium. Milk and yogurt have a small impact on blood glucose levels due to the natural sugar lactose. Try for three portions a day to meet your calcium needs and where possible, choose lower fat and lower sugar options. Milk, cheese, yogurt, fromage fray, quark and non-dairy are included in this group. If you are using dairy alternatives, such as soya, oat or rice milks, it's important to choose unsweetened and calcium fortified versions. Carbohydrates are a good source of energy and the main source of a range of nutrients in the diet. As well as starch, these foods supply fiber, calcium, iron and B vitamins. During digestion, your body breaks down most carbohydrates into a simple sugar called glucose, which is used by the body as the main source of energy. The key is to find a balance between eating enough carbohydrates to get the energy you need and limiting them enough to ensure you have good control of your blood glucose level. The best way to do this is to spread them evenly throughout the day. The types and amount of carbohydrate you eat will also determine how well controlled your blood glucose levels are. This is discussed in more detail in the next slides. Carbohydrates can be divided into two main categories as shown in the slide. Simple sugars include sweets, jam, fruit juice, and full sugar fizzy drinks. Foods that contain simple sugars cause a sharp rise in blood glucose levels within 10 to 15 minutes. Complex carbohydrates, alternatively known as starchy carbohydrates, include bread, breakfast cereals, potatoes, rice, pasta, chapatis, and noodles. Foods that contain starchy carbohydrates cause a rise in blood glucose levels gradually over four hours. Fibre is a type of complex carbohydrate that cannot be broken down by the small intestine. The main types of dietary fibre are soluble, insoluble and resistant starches. Due to the fact it takes the body longer to break down higher fibre foods, these foods can help control blood glucose levels. There are certain food swaps that can be made to increase the fibre intake of your diet. To increase your fibre intake, you could choose a higher fibre breakfast cereal such as plain whole wheat biscuits like Weetabix, plain shredded whole grain like shredded wheat or oats. Opt for wholemeal or granary breads and choose whole grains like whole wheat pasta, bulgur wheat or brown rice. Opt for potatoes with their skins on such as baked potato or boiled new potatoes. Add pulses like beans, lentils or chickpeas to stews, curries and salads. Include plenty of vegetables with meals, either as a side dish or added to sauces, stews or curries. For snacks, try fresh fruit, vegetable sticks, rye crackers, oat cakes and unsalted nuts or seeds. The current slide provides you with some recommended options of which healthy complex carbohydrates you can include with each meal versus the carbohydrates to avoid or eat less of. You can pause the video at this point and take as long as you need to read the suggestions in more detail. The graph shown on the slide gives a visual representation of the different impact on blood glucose levels when you compare sugary and starchy carbohydrates. Each time you eat or drink something sugary or starchy, the blood glucose level in your body rises. Typically, simple sugars are released into the bloodstream within 15 minutes of consumption. Some of these cause quick, sharp rises in blood glucose levels. Time taken to digest complex or starchy carbohydrates can vary, but on the whole is a lot longer. These carbohydrates will break down slowly and be absorbed gradually into the bloodstream. They are therefore good at helping to control blood glucose levels. It is good to note that different factors can affect digestion time, such as fat, fiber, and protein content of the foods eaten, 
as well as portion size of the carbohydrate eaten. As previously mentioned, sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream very quickly. Because of this, consumption of these foods makes it difficult to maintain optimal blood glucose control. For that reason, the advice is to avoid these types of food during pregnancy. It is important to avoid full sugar fizzy drinks. Diet and zero versions are suitable. Do not add sugar to any food or drink, for example, tea, coffee, or breakfast cereals. It is, however, suitable to use sweeteners. You should also avoid sugary sweets and large amounts of jam. Fruit juice should be limited to a maximum of 1 times 150 ml portion per day. This information leaflet gives an overview of how the different food groups affect your blood glucose levels. Feel free to pause the video at this point if you would like to read this slide in more detail. Here, we will revisit a small summary of what we have learned across this video. The three main food groups are carbohydrates, fats and protein. All carbohydrates raise blood glucose levels. The most important treatment for gestational diabetes is a healthy, balanced diet, including high fiber starchy carbohydrates, good regular sources of protein, heart healthy fats, and dairy or dairy alternatives. Carbohydrates are divided into two groups, sugars and starch. These have different effects on blood glucose levels. Intake of simple sugars, such as full sugar fizzy drinks, sweets and jam should be avoided. In general, your diet should include protein plus the right mix of carbohydrates and fats. Too many carbohydrates can lead to spikes in your blood glucose levels. This video was produced by registered dietitians from the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Diabetes Service. We thank you for watching and now encourage you to continue on to watching video three portion sizes, smart swaps, snack ideas, and meal patterns.